Okay. Before we get on to uh, the components we're going to be releasing today, I just wanted to say thanks to everyone who's uh, liked and subscribed to our videos. I'm sorry that not everyone is able to get all of the components working. Uh, we're working in the background trying to get everything working for everyone. Uh, but, you know, if you remember the geolocation component, when we first open sourced it uh, a little while back, uh, I think maybe three people in the entire Adalo community were able to get it working. And then, you know, we were able to get maybe 10% of the people on it, uh, and then 50% of the people, and I think by now, most people are able to use the geolocation component. So the same goes with all the other things. Uh, you know, we'll be improving them over time to get it more available to more people. In the meantime, uh, I've become pretty busy myself, so I've actually asked Tim, uh, who works at Pragmaflow, to take over the Adalo communication stuff. So if anyone uh, has questions, comments, concerns, feel free to reach out to Tim at Pragmaflow.com. He's going to be uh, around the forum some more, and he's going to be the point of contact for our Adalo stuff. Uh, so thanks again. Like, subscribe, and uh, and I hope you enjoy this this component dump. We got a couple of new components uh, we're going to be releasing today. Um, there are going to be two helpers. Uh, so one of them is Ably Web Sockets. So Ably is a site um, that works well in the no code community for building web sockets because you don't need to actually have a server. Uh, you can just send messages between the clients and then the backend's taken care of. So this will require a separate registration uh, to be able to use these web sockets, but it's pretty simple to set up and it's pretty affordable. Uh, we also have a timer action. So this one is just gonna fire uh, an action based on a timer. It's very simple and it's a utility function that I'm gonna show you how we can use this uh, to do the, the main component, which is actually driving directions. So uh, I see a lot of people uh, showing how to clone Uber Eats. Uh, and no one actually clones Uber Eats uh, because they're not using the geolocation. And one of the niftiest features of Uber Eats is being able to track your driver. So with this component, uh, you know, we'll be able to track the driver as he's making the deliveries. And I'll show you how to do that. Um, not quite in the Uber Eats way, but hopefully with a bit of ingenuity, uh, most of you will be able to get this working easily. So Adalo Pragmaflow servers.com slash install components. We have three new components coming out. Uh, as always, if you go and want to become a patron of ours, if you like what we're doing, feel free to, to subscribe to us and uh, help us continue to help everyone. So we have uh, Pragmaflow Inc. Adalo Ably sockets. Feel free to create issues uh, if you want to, to request some features, upgrade some features. A Dallow timer action and a Dallow driving direction. So to get started, we're just going to go and look at the the first two components, which is the Ably sockets and the Ably timer action. So to do this, I'm just going to open up PWA mode. So this here is going to be the sender. And I have the receiver on my phone. So let me change this to high again. And what happened there, I didn't show my other screen, oops, is that when I clicked on send, it sent high again to this. So this isn't going to the Adalo database server and then this is not pulling it. It just sends the message. So the other thing that we have done is uh, set up a timer actually. So using the second component, rather than clicking on the button to send the notification or to send the, the message, I put on a 10 second timer. So every 10 seconds, if you just noticed it changed here, it's going to, to transmit the data automatically every 10 seconds. And this is how we're gonna actually update the driver's location for our fake Uber Eats app. So let's just see how those two parts of this worked. So I have two buttons, sender, which just links to the sender page and receiver links to the receiver page. 
And then on the sender page, I have a button, two text fields, the Ably sender component, and set interval. Set interval comes from the uh, a download timer action. So let's investigate. So the Ably sender, I'm going to delete the API key. Uh, this will be your API key. Don't try to use this one. It'll be gone by the time I publish this video. This is the API key that we get from Ably to be able to send these messages. If you need more, uh, we can go through it after. Uh, just send me a message. But you create an app in Ably. When you create the app, you'll be able to go to API keys and you'll be able to create a new API key. And then this is the number that you're gonna to want to paste into your Ably API key. Uh, who are you? So when it comes to Ably, they wanna know, you know who's sending the message. This is just a unique identifier to know who's sending the message and, and who's gonna be receiving the message. Uh, we always communicate over channels. So I call this channel maps. This can be anything, uh, as long as the sender and receiver are in the same channel. Uh, this is the sub channel. So once you're in a channel, you can subscribe to messages. So this is going to be the location. And here I've hard coded it into the receiver, but you'd probably want to have a page before it that says, you know, this is my driver and pass that data into here so that this is a dynamic field instead of being hard coded. With the WebSocket, we built it so that you can have five different values. So it's hard coded to five. Um, so if you want to send, you know, here I've put input one and two or input four and five. Uh, so whatever's in these fields is what's going to be sent. But we can go up to five different ones. This one, when you set it to true, is how we actually send the message. So the message is only sent when. Uh, the value entered into here is true. And I've made a, a hidden off screen uh, unlinked text box called send message box. So when I change this input to true, it's going to send the message uh, that we've configured here. Finally, when a message is successfully sent or when a message fails to send, what we want to do is set the message box to false set the message box to error, uh, just so that we can clear out that true, so that the next time we set it to true, we'll be able to send it again. So that's it, we, we put in our API key, we identify ourselves, we create a name of a channel, this can be anything, uh, as long as the sender and receiver are in the same channel. This is the message that we're gonna be sending, or this is, sorry, the, the message title or the subscription that we're gonna be sending. This is the actual message we're going to be sending. Set this to true um, to send the message. And then we clear this true uh, once we've either successfully sent it or failed to send it. So now when you saw me click on the button, when I click on the button, all I'm doing is setting this text or this text box off screen to true, which will indicate to the Avery sender to send the message. But we probably don't want to do that when it comes to the GPS stuff because your driver would have to keep pressing on send. So what we're gonna use instead is the set interval. So we're gonna say the delay before starting is zero. We don't need to delay. As soon as we get to the screen, we can start this timer. And it's going to do this action repeatedly every this amount of time in milliseconds. So every 10 seconds, this is going to happen. And what that does is it sets the, the message box here to true. So every 10 seconds, this becomes true, which means this is going to send the message. And when the message is sent, it's gonna reset it back to false. And it's gonna do that every 10 seconds. Uh, so you know the driver in our, our Uber Eats will have the screen open and it's gonna be sending his GPS location every 10 seconds or however much you want to configure it to uh, the person who's waiting at their house for the delivery. 
So this is the sender side of things, or this would be the driver in, in the Uber Eats scenario. We also have the receiver page. So I've just put two text box fields here and the Ably listener component. So what happens is we have to put the same API key in. We identify ourselves. We have to make sure that this is the same channel name as we've put in here. And now we wanna listen for events. So we're gonna listen for location slash user email. So location slash my email. So if I log in as Stephen plus one at pragmaflow.com, then I will receive those messages uh, as they come across to me. And then what we do when a message is received, I'm gonna set input eight to the first value, input nine to the second value. Again, we have up to five different values in this component, so you could send five separate messages. So the way that we want to do that is if we remember, we go back to our old friend geolocation. So we can delete this button, we no longer need it. We're gonna continuously read the location so that we'll update the driver's location. When the location has been updated, we are going to change the input. Number four to my to the, the user's current latitude. And we're gonna go and change input five to the current longitude. So anytime we have a location change, this will update these two text boxes. When these two text boxes get updated, this component here is going to send the message using the Ably sender every 10 seconds. So we're gonna be receiving geolocation coordinates every 10 seconds. So I'm stationary right now. Uh, so it's just sent this. You won't actually see the update because the geolocation isn't actually moving. I'm, I'm static. And the web browser's geolocation doesn't have the same uh, resolution as the one on your phone. But as this person's moving, this will be updated. And then the receiver will be able to get uh, the updated coordinates of where that person is. So now what's the next step? We, we have now successfully using WebSockets transmitted uh, one person's geolocation to another person so that we can do real time stuff. So now what we do is we take our driving component. Let's actually put that on the receiver screen. So this here will give driving directions. So the way we configure this is we have the person's, uh, the origin's latitude and the origin longitude. So in this case, it's actually going to be the sender's latitude and longitude that the receiver is gonna be receiving. So let's go grab our other text boxes. Oh. I'm missing two text boxes somewhere. Uh, they're probably on the work screen, sorry about that. Yeah, they're here. So we can, uh, in the receiver screen, let's just, let's just change this here to be these two, two boxes. So we saw just before that these two boxes received the latitude and longitude. So this will be component eight, delete that and make this component nine. So this is the driver's latitude and longitude, and this is the destination. So I can either put in my GPS coordinates, I'm just gonna leave it hard-coded to, to this, 
Uh, but this could be the, the store that they're going to pick it up. So if it's Uber Eats, you know, it's going to be two trips. The first is the driver going to the store. And then we put the destination latitude and longitude of the store here. Once they've picked up the food, then we update this to where they're supposed to drop it off. A couple of other configurations. We have the line color. You know, when you're doing a map, this is the line that's going to be drawn to show the directions. Uh, the thickness of that line, Google Maps API key. Again, I'll be deleting this before publishing this video, but you need a Google Maps API key. And uh, the origin marker image and the destination marker image. So if you wanted to, you can upload your own you know, picture of a car. So you'll see the car moving across the screen, uh, or you set up a house, or you set up an apartment or a person's face. If you wanted to make a Waze clone, uh, you can use the Waze you know, people icon and, and just with the web sockets, uh, render people on the map themselves so you could see them. So we also have uh, direction metadata that we could use if you wanted to make this prettier. Uh, what we can do is we can change the input value of one of the other screens. And we actually have two things that we can show. We have distance in meters and we have duration in seconds. So this will tell the person uh, on the other end or tell the receiver uh, how far away that person is and how long it will take them to drive to where you are. So you can say the person is five kilometers away and it will take them three minutes to get there. Uh, and every time we receive their new geolocation, it will then update this and update the distance in meters and the distance in seconds so that your, your page has a nice display of how long it will take for them to get there. So now let's see where we're at. So I'm going to click on the share. And there we go. We now have driving directions from point A to point B. And as this gets updated, Maybe, maybe I should have driven closer to the target. So let's actually just change these numbers here to nine, six, there we go, zero. So we can see as we're updating this, and this would be updated using the web sockets, we're getting closer and closer to our destination. And eventually you'll be at the destination. So that's it, we, uh, we can use, web sockets, timers, and everything else to track a person's driving movements uh, to a destination.